Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School out here by a small pond in a wildlife area today. And I'm doing some experiments and checking some things out that I have built over the last day to make sure that a solar system I'm using will be capable of charging everything that I need to charge and power everything that I need to power when I'm in the field. And I showed you guys a power system with the power film that was built into a brick and you open it up and you have a 20 watt solar panel. What I brought here today was something that's got a little bit more versatility, so to speak, a lot more power, and we would probably want conveyance to carry this stuff around. It's not the size of a Jackery. It's not that big, but you do have a solar panel that doesn't fold up quite as small. You do have a separate external battery that's fairly heavy. We're going to talk about all that stuff today, but we've got enough power to run, charge, and do anything we want to do pretty much with our devices out here. And as long as we're in something like our Jeep, it's not a big deal. And we've got more charging power this way, and we've got more amp hours within the battery to not charge it if we have to by solar means. So let's talk about this real quick. Okay, guys, I apologize for this wind. With this setup right now, I have a Microsoft Surface Go, and it's plugged in and it's charging. I have my iCom 705. Again, plugged in so it will run a full 10 watts because I've got 12 volts going into it. And it's charging the external battery on the back at the same time. And I have an HT, just a Baofeng HT UV5R, whatever it is over there, charging as well. And a charge controller and a battery. And then we have a solar panel down here on the ground facing up into the sun. That's the system we're using. Now let's kind of walk through it and reverse engineer it. Okay, one of my major things I had to work through and I actually created the cable this morning. And that's one of the reasons I came out here was to see if it was going to work with my system. I bought a charging cable for a cigarette lighter plug for this Surface Pro or Surface Go, excuse me, off Amazon. It's about nine bucks. And I cut cigarette lighter adapter off of it. And I put Anderson power poles on it so I could plug it into my charge controller. We'll talk about that in a minute, but it is charging the laptop. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so if you look at the indicator on the bottom of the computer there, you can see that it is showing plugged in and charging. So it's being charged by an external battery, a 12-volt external battery. Now, if we look at our ICOM 705 and we go to quick voltage, you can see that, A, we're running from an external power source, and we're charging the external battery on the back at the same time. So we're running the radio at a full 12 watts, which gives us full power here 100 percent 10 watts and at the same time we're charging the battery on the back of the radio that's the external battery that will run without the 12 volt connection now the last thing we've got going on here is we have an ht plugged in to the usb port of this buddy pole charge controller we'll talk about in a minute you can see it's green the battery is fully charged on this ht so it's not drawing anything at the moment on the ground here facing the sun, we have a flash fish solar panel right off Amazon. Comes with the plugs that you need to plug it into something like an anchor charger, like a large brick with the outlets and things on the front of it. I bought a cable from Amazon that has Anderson power poles on it to go into the charge controller that I have. We'll talk about that in a minute, but it was about nine bucks for that cable. And it will go straight from the solar panels into the charge controller. You also have two USB ports on this panel that you can charge directly from if you need to for something like a cell phone or a computer or something like that that you can plug into a USB charging component. Now the meat and potatoes of everything is really right here, okay? We have a 12 volt BioNO battery in here that is 30 amp hours, if I remember correctly. We'll get it out in a minute and we'll look at it. And I have a Buddy Pole 2 Mini or Buddy Pole Power Mini 2 charge controller. Okay, so this Buddy Pole Power Mini charge controller, this is the heart and soul of everything besides the battery. Okay, try to hold it so you can see the screen. So the first thing we have is just a information screen is telling us what our solar is doing and what our battery upper lower limits are. Okay, on this next screen, we have power up time, which is the time that this system has been operating 1.6 hours solar power currently 3.5 watts we've got a cloudy 
time coming over right now, so we're not getting very much in. Our solar peak, since we turned this system on, has been 25.3 watts coming in from the panel. And the battery use of 0.78, I believe it says, amp hours, is the difference between the solar we've put into it since we started and the amp hours we've used off the battery since we started. So we've used one less than one amp hour since we started this whole thing, and we're putting charge in constantly. The next screen allows us to set what type of battery we're using, whether it's a lithium ion battery, a, some type of a lead acid battery, things like that. We can set all those parameters on this screen. Right now we're set up for a Life Pro Bio NO battery, which is what we're running. And then we have controls for alarms or upper lower limits and high voltage trips and high voltage resets. And we can set those parameters the way we want to. We have two loads that we can put out of this controller. One of those is running the radio. One of those is running the computer right now or charging them, I should say. They're being ran by their own internal batteries or the external battery. We have a solar input here, a USB port here that we're using to charge our HT. And we'll talk about that cable in a minute. And then we have a battery and this is the main battery in this bag that we're gonna talk about next in this system. All right, so this is our BioNO battery, and it is a lithium ion phosphate battery, 12 volts, 30 amp hours, 360 watt hours of output. It's got an internal charge controller. There is a 110 charger for that. That's in this Molly bag that I keep it in. It's a perfect fit for the Pathfinder Molly bag. You put the charge controller on top, cables in the front. And it's a all in all in one unit that way. You can charge it if you want 110 or you can charge it off solar. Either way, it's got an internal controller that will keep it from overcharging if you plug it into 110 with the cables provided. Okay, now these BioNO batteries are not cheap by any means. These are expensive batteries. You can buy them in different sizes. This is way more really than what I need, but it gives me more power than I need and I like that. However, half a battery, half the size of this for a backpack would be plenty adequate and wouldn't add a lot of weight to your backpack. You know, two or three pounds. To some people, that's a lot of weight. To me, that's not much. However, these type batteries have big advantages because you can recharge them not hundreds of times, but thousands of times. So it's a very long life battery that you're getting for your money that will run lots of things and charge in multiple ways. Okay, let's look at these connections. These are Anderson Power Pole connections. It's a simple plug-in, red to red, black to black. On this side, you have a solar, which is yellow, which is your red and black. On this one, you have battery, which is blue, and that should help you remember, I think, more than anything else. Okay, you also have a USB port on here that allows you to plug in USB devices like this charging cable for this Baofeng HT. A cell phone, anything like that can be plugged into here to charge it with this charge controller plugged in as well. The battery, the BioNO battery, comes with these Anderson power poles standard and this secondary connector. I'm not sure what you call this heavy duty thing here, but it comes with an Anderson power pole connector on a standard and a lot of ham radio stuff does as well. This is the cable that I had to create. So I cut this 12 volt piece off, red to red, black to black inside Anderson power pole connectors, crimp those and put the plastic shielding or rubber shielding over the top. And now I have an Anderson power pole connector on my computer that I can also plug into this charging system cohesively. All right, so as you can see, this bio battery fits perfect in this Pathfinder Molly bag. I can tuck the cables right down inside, take the charge controller, set it on the top, cinch everything down, and we're ready to go. Now I've got the cables for the 110, like I said here. I want to charge on a 110 outlet and everything fits nice and neat inside this so I can carry this thing over my shoulder if I want to carry it off away from the vehicle. Okay, so as you can see, there it all is. Really not that much there. You got a bag and a panel. I've got a laptop or a surface. I've got a handheld there and my radio bag is here. A couple extra cables here, one for the radio, one for the laptop. Pretty much everything's all self-contained. I can throw those cables wherever I need to. But you don't have a whole lot to carry around right there if you want a portable system that you can take with you in a conveyance and do a lot with it. 
Trying to get out of this wind a little bit, guys. Not really easy today. I apologize if there's any wind in this video. But I appreciate you joining me for another video out here today in this series. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.